silver is way below its equilibrium price. From my analysis, the equilibrium price right now for silver is almost $16. Um, and as the buying interest increases, uh, that uh, equilibrium price moves up. So the price, real price actually tries to ha chase it. Um, so from that point of view, silver uh, is ready to move uh, better and stronger than gold. Uh, it's just having a bit of a headwind right now. Once it, it overcomes that, I think uh, we'll see silver outperform gold quite dramatically. Um, now, in, in regards to that and the uh, the, the little uh, hang-up that silver has right now, according to your analysis, um, do you think uh, silver is going to look a lot better, as per your analysis, before gold breaks through a thousand, or might it continue to lag just a bit uh, until we get that major breakout in gold? Um, I would say that it will probably start to uh, outperform gold before gold goes for a thousand. Uh, I think this uh, this bit of headwind is is only very short term. Uh, it may be over by the end of next week. Um, so I I don't see it uh, being a uh, a major lag on silver for very long. And just to reiterate, you're looking for a even more explosive move in silver uh, once we get these breakouts uh, in the entire sector. Uh, absolutely, and uh, in silver, um, you know, as as you probably know, I mean, there's very little left on on, on the planet. Uh, the U.S. Uh, Geological Society uh, said just a couple of years ago that uh, silver would be the first uh, element in the periodic table that would become extinct, and that news almost got buried on probably page 20 of the Wall Street Journal. Um, you know, that's incredibly bullish. Uh, they said that, that would happen by 2020. Uh, so, um, you know, if we, uh, we're in the situation where we can run out of silver, the price clearly has to go up because we can't obviously run out of silver. What will happen is the price will have to go to a price level where it's economic to recycle it. Uh, we recycle almost all the gold we use. Uh, in any industrial application, but we throw silver away in our cell phone batteries and soldered connections, this sort of thing, in landfills. Uh, so the price has to go to uh, a price probably close to the price of gold right now for it to be economic to not throw another gram of silver away in a landfill. Uh, we don't throw any gold away. Um, so I see silver probably uh, eventually reaching a price which is higher than gold. Uh, based on the fact that it's more rare than gold right now because we've consumed it. Oh, that's uh, very interesting. You, you think that the, the silver-gold ratio then could uh, presumably, um, I guess the historical average I think is 14 if I remember correctly. So you think that it could actually, uh, in that case, then it would go below one? Yes, uh, and uh, many analysts uh, you know, keep the same sort of ratios that we had in the past, forgetting that uh, uh, we're uh, we're consuming silver and it's irretrievable. It's uh, it's not going to ever be recycled from landfills. Uh, so the the traditional ratio that you find in the Earth's crust is is fine while there's still plenty of it around. But as it starts to become extinct, then uh, uh, silver becomes very rare and will become more rare than gold. It's, it's difficult for us to get our minds around it right now, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, if you look what happened to rhodium, uh, uh, what, two, two years ago, it went from $300 to $10,000 an ounce. And most people probably even, don't even know that. It certainly didn't get on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Um, but, you know, that was a move that could be made in the metal and didn't even make any news. Uh, so, uh, you know, silver can, can do something that's uh, a lot more dramatic. Yeah, certainly, um, you know, we know that, you know, assuming gold makes us break through a thousand, that it's likely to have uh, quite a parabolic run, but everyone would agree that silver would probably do the same, and then it just becomes very difficult to know when it's going to end, when it's going to peak. And I'll, I would throw in that news tidbit you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago from the uh, geologic survey about uh, silver extinction. Uh, it doesn't exactly sound like... Uh, an extremely negative piece of fundamental news, I would say. Right, and and the 
you know, gold uh, almost has no uh, industrial applications. Uh, you know, this is what uh, the bears throw at us that uh, is negative about gold apparently is that it has no use. Um, well, it has no use which consumes it. Its use, uh, its sole use essentially is to store value. Uh, and that's what it does perfectly. And it and obviously does it very well because we still have pretty much all the gold that's ever been mined uh, in history uh, still above ground somewhere. So it's perfectly stored wealth for 6,000 years and has never been consumed. Um, so th this notion that there's something negative about uh, gold because it has no industrial use uh, is rubbish. Uh, it has one use, which is to store value, which is why governments hate it so much because uh, if gold is going up, there is only one reason why it's going up, and that's because people are using it to store value. Any other commodity which has more than one use, uh, like silver, uh, like copper, like oil, uh, you can always point to, oh, it's the, the economy is recovering, that's why the uh, that commodity is going up. Uh, but gold you can't make excuses for, so that's why uh, the price is suppressed. Um, but uh, uh, silver does have uh, industrial uses, and it competes with its use as a store of value. And uh, the industrial use has been so big compared to investment demand that it's the, uh, uh, the industrial application which has suppressed the price. Uh, you imagine if you wanted to invest in bread, uh, you wouldn't stand much chance of its price going up because people keep making as much bread as people ask for. And, and that's been the case for, with, with silver for a long time, um, except that it's drawn down most of the uh, accumulated stocks. Now we're getting to the point where uh, the, um, the investment demand and the industrial demand is in competition and it will drive the price to very high levels. And we can't live without silver. Uh, the limit, we could say, well, if gold disappeared from the planet tomorrow, life would still go on. Uh, if that was the case with silver, life would not go on. Uh, most of the uh, technology that we use today would just uh, cease to exist. Yes, well, I'm sure uh, that, who knows, maybe in five years people will be uh, <laughs> selling and uh, recycling their forks uh, and their knives and spoons, uh, given the economic situation and how high the price of silver might go. Now, uh, I just want to get uh, some final thoughts uh, on on the uh, precious metals bull market, uh, and I asked asked this to Bill Murphy uh, during that interview. Now, some analysts I talk to they see this being a uh, this run that we presumably started. They see it lasting maybe two to three years and a huge spike. And Bill Murphy said he thinks it could go on for five to eight years. Um, where do you fit in that camp? And also, do you think this bull market is going to end with some kind of a hard money standard or uh, something else, namely really high interest rates? Uh, yes, um, I think going on for a long time, mainly because uh, you know this is not just a uh, um, a story about gold and silver. This is actually a story about the breakdown of the financial system, uh, global financial system, the breakdown of currencies and the breakdown of this scam that, of fiat currencies. Um, so that is what is making uh, real things, commodities and particularly gold and silver, uh, to now increase in value with respect to those fiat currencies. And because that is systemic, this will last a long time. Uh, and it will last until there is a fix for that systemic problem. Uh, so, yes, what you mentioned there, uh, the fix will ha eventually have to be some sort of hard money, uh, some sort of backing of, uh, of, of uh, the currencies. And, and I can't see that happening for, uh, for many years until politicians are really forced to, uh, into that situation as a last resort. They'll try everything uh, under the sun to avoid that uh, before they go to a hard money system. Uh, so this this will be a bull market that goes on a long time. Uh, as for interest rates uh, under the current structure, I can't see that that can be a solution. Uh, if they were to raise interest rates like Volcker did to 21% to kill uh, the commodity rallies, then uh, we would uh, uh, do a lot of damage to the world economy. So I don't think that's a solution this time around. Uh, 
there's uh, far too much uh, leverage in the system compared to when Volcker did that, and the system just cannot take it.